What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. On the last part, we saw what happened in the battle with Cooler. The Saiyans entered a massive fight with Frieza's brother, and both parties had some impressive strength, although Cooler seemed to be too much to overcome. Raditz lost his life in this battle, causing Kakarot to turn Super Saiyan, and this granted them just enough power to actually defeat Cooler. But that leaves the Saiyans in an odd spot. For one, Kakarot now wants to get vengeance against Frieza, now knowing who Frieza truly is, he now also wants to revive Raditz. Not only wanting to avenge his brother, but also bring him back. For this part, let's hit a like goal of 3500 likes. Once we hit that, I'll continue with another part of the series. Anyways, let's pick up from here. After hearing what happened with the Saiyans before, he thinks it might be best to start formulating a plan. The more he thinks about it, the more he begins to realize that they probably did actually kill Cooler, even though they couldn't find remains of him. King Cold wonders if Cooler actually did die in this battle, and if that's the case, then Frieza might be in trouble. As far as they knew, Cooler was actually pretty strong. I mean, look at the family he comes from. But the thing is with Cooler, he actually claimed he was always stronger than Frieza, but they never really took that seriously. Although, the fact that Cooler did die in this battle is still pretty bad regardless. Whether or not Cooler's stronger than Frieza, it's a big deal. The fact that the Saiyans are able to band together and kill someone this powerful, well, it should be pretty concerning for Frieza and Cold. They're not entirely sure what to do because they don't know where the Saiyans are, and for all they know, they could strike at any moment. And they expect that to happen eventually. Obviously, they don't know when, but they know it's going to happen. If the Saiyans were to still work under Frieza by that point, well, they'd be back here. And they'd be stupid to do that, because they know that Frieza betrayed them after what happened with Zarbon and Dodoria. So, it's pretty clear to them now, the Saiyans are working against them. And as much as Frieza hates the prospect, King Cold suggests the idea of training. Frieza's absolutely disgusted by this. That's not something he would do. But King Cold reminds Frieza, with how strong Frieza is and how great his potential is as a mutant, he's not going to have to train for a while. Maybe a week will be enough. Just enough to go beyond Cooler's supposed strength. That is a good point. It won't take too long to train, although Frieza still hates the idea. But whatever, it's better to be safe than sorry against these pesky monkeys. So, Frieza and Cold begin planning. But these two aren't the only ones planning and training. As we shift over to the Saiyans, they're doing the same exact thing. Vegeta and Nappa begin their training, alongside Kakra who's continuing his. Kakra shows off Super Saiyan some more, and as he tries to practice more and more with it, he gets a better grasp on actually using the form. Obviously, this is what Vegeta and Nappa are aiming towards right now. They want to get the same form. If they get it, there's going to be no one that can defeat them. Three Super Saiyans at once, and if Raditz comes back, four Super Saiyans possibly. And it seems Kakarot's already getting a pretty good hang of it. I mean, it's not too hard for him to access it again. He already knows what it feels like, and just channeling his anger by thinking of Frieza or Raditz, that's more than enough to get him to transform. The more he thinks about these two things, the angrier he gets. His whole life was a lie. Frieza was lying to him all along stringing him along and using him as an expendable weapon. And obviously Raditz is a sore spot for him too, although it's more so grief rather than anger. But there is still anger directed towards Frieza and Cooler for that because it was kind of their faults after all. Even during Kakarot's training, he accidentally transforms into Super Saiyan sometimes just thinking about it, even when he doesn't want to transform. There's just so many mixed emotions pent up within him that it causes this to happen. Vegeta and Nappa obviously take note of this. They realize that while Kakarot's feelings are pretty warranted considering what happened, they don't want Kakarot to be a loose cannon. The way he's acting right now, it's kind of concerning. Yeah, it's great that he's on their side. And he is a pretty strong warrior. But what if his emotions blind him too much, and that takes control of Kakarot? They're not concerned because they expect Kakarot to turn on them. Rather, they're concerned Kakarot will do something rash, especially in the heat of battle. If they match up against Frieza and Kakarot's emotions get to him, that could be a pretty bad thing that causes him to slip up. They need to get that in check. One day, Vegeta is sparring with Kakarot, and brings this up during his training. He doesn't want Kakarot being a loose cannon like this, but Kakarot sees this as an insult rather than help. He tells Vegeta that he can't even begin to understand the things that Kakarot's going through right now. It's just been revealed to him that his entire existence is a lie. He's wasted so much time working under Frieza, and for what? Not only that, but his brother just died. Kakarot's emotions bubble up more and more during this fight, and eventually he goes Super Saiyan on accident once more, hitting Vegeta with great power during their sparring match. This actually does injure Vegeta a bit, and then Kakarot sees what he's been saying. He powers down and apologizes. Realizing that Vegeta's not trying to insult him, he's trying to help. And you know what? Maybe it is better if he tries to get control of his emotions. Not only will it get his mind off everything, but it'll make him a better fighter. And he doesn't want to accidentally hurt Vegeta or Nappa during their training like he just did. Of course, Vegeta doesn't really care too much about getting hurt. If anything, he's just going to heal back stronger. But he's glad that Kakarot finally realizes this. Vegeta begins discussing with Nappa more and more. Obviously, they don't really know Kakarot too well. Especially compared to someone like Raditz who's been with them for years. Kakarot's only been with them for about a few months and they learn more about him every day. Nappa sees that he's definitely an amazing fighter, and they're warming up more and more to Kakarot. One of the great things too is that Kakarot knows a lot about the inside of Frieza's army. Obviously, Vegeta and Nappa do as well, but Kakarot knows even more, 
He was working right alongside Frieza. He knows everything about the operations and the people inside him. This information will actually be very useful, once they actually do plan to strike. But first, they're going to aim to actually revive Raditz, which leads them to a planet called Namek, one where there's apparently wish orbs, some odd magical devices that grant wishes once you collect all of them. But there is one pretty big issue. They know that if they go to Namek, Frieza might try and follow them. And not only would that interfere with their plan, but they might be leading Frieza right to the Dragon Balls, which would be a terrible thing. Nappa argues that Kakarot might be strong enough to fight Frieza, but they gotta remember, there's also King Cold, and for all they know, the two of them are planning, and they might be even stronger than before. They were only just barely able to defeat Cooler. And they wanna be extra careful, they don't want another situation like that on their hands where they might end up dying. So they begin debating, should they go for the Dragon Balls right now and risk Frieza finding them, or should they go attack first? Kakarot says they should go to attack first, although they can't do that right now. They have to train first. They want to be extra sure that they can defeat Frieza and his army, as well as King Colt. In order to do that, he sets a milestone. He wants Vegeta and Nappa to access Super Saiyan as well. But while they're doing this, they want to make sure that Frieza never finds Namek, so they don't even fly close to that planet. In case they get detected, they don't want to be anywhere near that place. This poses an issue. Now they need somewhere to hide out. They don't want to just stay in their spaceship forever. They need a planet to hide on. They can't go on a barren planet, that might be too obvious because the last one they were on was also barren, and Frieza might be searching those to see if anyone's on there. Of course, he isn't, but they don't know that. They could go to a civilized planet, but a lot of civilized planets are owned by Frieza's army. So obviously not one of those. They're gonna need to go to a very unsuspecting planet, one that's far away, one that's suitable for them to live on, and one that Frieza hopefully doesn't know about. Thankfully, they are able to locate a very small planet far away, one with a breathable atmosphere, and one that isn't on Frieza's radar. They're still not too sure about it, but they decide to go to that planet and see what it's like, scouting it out to make sure it's a suitable hideout for them. And just as they suspected, it is a civilized planet. It seems a lot of the people here are weak. And they're surprised Frieza hasn't found a planet like this yet. Yeah, it's small and unsuspecting, but it could be very valuable. The gravity is pretty light though, so that might make training a bit harder because they won't see as many gains. But it seems like the best hideout place. And another great factor is the fact that the population here, they look kind of like Saiyans. This planet is populated by a race known as humans and they're on a planet called Earth. It's odd how similar these people look to Saiyans, although they don't have tails, obviously. But this is a great. Kakarot, Vegeta, and Nappa could easily disguise themselves if they ever need to go get resources in the cities or whatever, and no one will see them as aliens. I mean, as long as they don't wear the giant armor that they have on. But they don't need to worry about that right now. For now, they need to find a place to train, and they go out into a wasteland so they're away from civilization. And this seems like a pretty suitable area. But remember, they're trying to hide out. They don't want to be noticed by Frieza or anyone on this planet in case this species of humans is somewhat hostile. But they find a good wasteland, and they start training there. Over the next few days, they train more and more. But with them training, of course that means their energy is going to spike. And there are people on Earth that can sense ki. And obviously they would take note of this, especially after a few days of continuous ki spikes. While the Saiyans are training, they suddenly sense two energies coming towards them. And then from another direction, a third energy that's also coming to see them. They wonder what this might be. Frieza soldiers? Some threats? or maybe just some people that ended up sensing them. They weren't aware that people on this planet knew how to sense ki, but it seems that might be the case. The first two energies land in front of them. It's one guy that's carrying an old man, and then another man shows up that has three eyes. They're all bald too for some reason, and the three people look at each other confused. Obviously this is Tenshinhan, Krillin, and Roshi. Krillin expected that that energy was Tenshinhan, and Ten expected the exact opposite. He thought it was Krillin and Roshi training. All three of them sensed energy spiking, but they didn't know who it was because they didn't recognize the ki signature but they look over to see the three Saiyans, who are looking at them equally as confused. The Earthlings aren't really too sure what to think of this. Wait, are these other Earthlings? They know that Earthlings can actually use Ki, but they never knew that other people could use it at this level. They've never sensed the power of the strong, and they're surprised that they've never seen this on Earth before. Realistically, if there were people on Earth this strong, they would have known. But what's even weirder, these people have tails, and they're wearing some weird clothing. They casually walk up to the Saiyans, asking who they are, and what they're doing here and why their Ki is so high. The Saiyans tell them not to worry, they just found this area to train in, they didn't want to disturb anyone else, so they thought that this area was good enough. But that still doesn't explain as to who they are, and why they're so strong. Roshi jokes around and says that they might be aliens, and the Saiyans actually get nervous when they hear this, and they try to humorously play it off, saying that they're just humans like them. No aliens here, how preposterous. But as Roshi examines them more and more, it gets a little bit weird. He can sense a latent maliciousness within them. I mean, it is suppressed greatly, but it's still there, and it's concerning. As Krillin and Tenshinhan keep pressing them, Roshi then jumps in once more. He says he sees through their act and asks why they're here. If they keep hiding it, he'll assume that they're here for a malicious reason, and they'll have no choice but to attack. They are acting really suspicious after all. So Roshi wants them to answer now as to why they're here. 
Well, seems like the gig is up. Kakarot steps in and introduces himself, saying that he's a Saiyan from outer space. A Saiyan? They have no clue what a Saiyan is, obviously. And even crazier, he's an alien? Aliens exist? That's weird. Kakarot thought the species was much more developed, and they would have known about aliens by now, as well as deep space travel. But Kakarot catches them up to speed, telling them who they are and why they're here. But still, even though they say that they're aliens, the group is suspicious of them. Why do they look so much like humans, and why are they on Earth of all places? But Vegeta butts in and explains. They're here because they needed a hideout. This place has a perfect atmosphere for them, and they could blend in with the civilization. Wait, a hideout? Hiding from what? Vegeta explains further, telling them about Frieza and who he is, as well as what ended up leading them here. Ten is pretty concerned about Frieza. I mean, these guys right here are strong, and it seems like Frieza makes them concerned, so they should be even more concerned than the Saiyans are. Vegeta assures them that Frieza won't come here. They've made sure to lay low and that Frieza doesn't know about this plan, and tells them to just leave them be. They're just going to be training for a few months and then they're going to leave permanently, going to defeat Frieza and they won't have to worry about any space emperors coming to take over their planet or anything. Ten says if they want, he could help them. He wouldn't mind training with people strong like this. And Krillin makes a pretty big mistake. He accidentally lets us slip that they could use the Dragon Balls to help somehow, then realizing it was probably a bad idea to mention the Dragon Balls. Wait, Dragon Balls? Kakarot picks up on this asking what those are. What, is that some sort of secret earth weapon that can defeat anyone? Or is it something completely different? The humans try to play it down at first, but the Saiyans keep pressing for answers, and then Roshi ends up explaining. Around Earth are seven Dragon Balls. They're hard to find, but if you gather them all together, you could summon Shenron and wish for whatever you want. Wait, wishes? Oh, those are wish orbs! But they thought those were only on Namek of all places. How are they on this planet? So the Saiyans know of Dragon Balls? Kakarot begins explaining more, and then everyone comes to a mutual understanding. Obviously the humans don't know this, but according to the Saiyans, there's a rumor that wish orbs exist out in space. So there might be another planet with Dragon Balls just like Earth's, but that won't matter. They didn't realize they landed on the planet that had wish orbs. Kakarot then asks for their help, begging them to help revive his brother. He's wanted to get wish orbs and he didn't know this planet had them, and tells everyone about who he's trying to revive. It's his brother Raditz, who was killed by Frieza's brother Cooler. The humans aren't exactly sure if they want to help them find the Dragon Balls. I mean, they still don't entirely trust these Saiyans, they could be lying after all. And there's also a bigger issue, Dragon Balls are pretty hard to find. Remember, Bulma's not really involved in the scenario, so without her, they don't really have a Dragon Ball radar. Of course, Krillin remembers that maybe the Red Ribbon Army had some sort of technology to track them. So maybe they could use something like that, but he doesn't say this out loud. He's still wondering if he can even trust them enough with the Dragon Balls. But then everyone hears a voice in their heads. It's Kami. He's been listening in and may want to help. He explains more about the Dragon Balls and his origin. He can tell that the Saiyans are telling the truth. And they're surprised to learn that a Namekian is on this planet, or at least what they assume is a Namekian. And since the stuff that they're saying about Frieza seems to be true, Kami says that it seems in the universe's best interest to actually help the Saiyans. He's not sure how much the humans will help in terms of strength, but if they help the Saiyans find Dragon Balls, that'll be very useful. They'll be reviving another Saiyan, and that'll ensure that Frieza stopped for good. Well, that settles it then. Krillin offers his help, as he leads the entire group over to the Red Ribbon Army's former base. It's a bunch of destroyed ruins, but they might find something useful. Of course, Frieza's not just sitting around either. He's continuing his planning and doing a bit of training, although he still hates the idea even after doing so. But after a week, he has noticed some incredible gains. I mean, look how strong he grew in Super with just a few months. He went from being below Super Saiyan Goku on Namek to being around Super Saiyan Blue Goku, which is, I, I don't even know how to describe it, that's just insane. So I'm sure a week of training would actually be sufficient enough here. It isn't a top priority to find the Saiyans right now, but they still have it on their mind. Eventually, they'll cross paths, and they'll be ready when that day comes. But maybe, instead of trying to hunt them down, they could draw them out somehow, set up some bait to get them to come to them. As Frieza and Cold keep plotting, this is where we'll leave up for now. So, what did you guys think about this part? What's going to happen with the Sands and Earth, and what are Frieza and Cold going to do? Leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. I'll be sure to check them out to see what you guys think. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like. And let's try and hit that like goal from the beginning of the video so we can get another part of the series. If you haven't already, why not subscribe? as well as hitting the bell icon to get notified about any future parts of this what if, or any other videos that I upload on my channel. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.